Hello everyone, welcome to Onco Cipher. Today we'll be discussing cutaneous wound healing, the chronology of which is extremely important. Now, healing of skin wounds occurs either by first or primary intention or second or secondary intention. Today we'll be discussing about healing by primary intention. What is this? Now, injury over here involves only the epithelial layer. Example being healing of a clean, uninfected surgical incision, which is approximated by surgical sutures. What happens in this is there is only focal disruption of epithelial base one membrane, and there is death of only a few epithelial and connective tissue cells. Okay, now repair occurs. First, we have inflammation followed by proliferation of the epithelium and finally connective tissue scar formation. Now we need to know the chronology of primary intention healing, which is extremely important. Immediately what happens is there is rapid activation of coagulation pathway because the bleeding needs to stop, right? So there is blood clot formation with the help of fibrin and platelets. On day one, what happens is there is neutrophils at the incision margin which migrate towards the clot. There is increased mitotic activity and the blood clot continues to grow. The epithelial cells they migrate and proliferate along the dermis and this forms a thin continuous epithelial layer which starts closing the wound. Okay, so on day one, there is neutrophils, increased mitotic activity, blood clot, and epithelial cell migration. On day three, what happens is the macrophages they replace the neutrophils. Granulation tissue starts laying down. What do the macrophages do? They clear the debris, fibrin, and the foreign material formed in the wound and also promote angiogenesis which provides nutrition to the growing tissue and extracellular matrix deposition. On day 5 what happens is there is maximum granulation tissue and maximum neovascularization. There is also a lot of edema of the tissue. Why? Because all these new vessels they are leaky and they allow the passage of plasma proteins and fluid into the extravascular space and this leads to a lot of edema of the tissue. And finally, there is proliferation of fibroblasts which starts laying down the collagen. So on day five, we have maximum granulation tissue, maximum blood vessel formation, maximum edema and proliferation of fibroblasts. Now, by the end of second week or let's say day 14 around, we have maximum collagen deposition and there is disappearance of edema and leukocyte cells. Okay, so day 14, there is maximum collagen and extremely less edema and all sort of cellular activity. Finally, at the end of first month or day 28, we have the scarring which is complete. This tissue is now devoid of any inflammatory cells and it is covered essentially by normal, almost normal epidermis. So by the end of day 28 or end of first month, we have scar tissue formation. This chronology is extremely important. Each step you must keep revising and keep studying again and again as it is always asked in your MCQs as well as in your practical exams. Okay, so keep revising and keep studying. Thank you.